Hey, good morning, people. It's good to be with you again. We're talking about the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5. We're just working systematically through them, although we are skipping around a little bit. We're talking about blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those who, who love God more than they love sin. That's basically what it's trying to say. And uh, we're talking about the process of this purity. We spoke on Friday about the, the fact that it begins with God. When God takes our heart of stone and he gives to us a heart of flesh, that's the beginning of the journey into this place of purity. It is a journey. And there are other aspects to purity that we need to notice. I want to talk today about the purity that comes by the word of God. There's a beautiful verse in Psalm 119 that says, How can a young man keep his way pure but by the word of God, according to his word? According to his word. Not the word of your culture, not the word of your pastor even, not the word of the people around you, not the word of prevailing wisdom, which is the wisdom of the majority, not by your parents' wisdom, not by your mentor's wisdom, although I'm sure there's some good stuff in and amongst that. But we keep our ways pure by the word of God. Sometimes those issues of culture and those places of higher education, we think that those are the authority. Those are the authority that we need to listen to. They've got all the answers. I've got to tell you people, they're not even scratching the surface because the wisdom of the Word of God is that which every believer needs to be paramount in his life if he's seeking to know what purity is all about. We have to get away or get rid of the wisdom of the world around us. A phenomenal example of this would have to be Moses. Moses came out of the bulrushes into a place of highest privilege, living in Pharaoh's palace, having the best education, having the best of everything that he could possibly want. And God had to say, Pharaoh had to say to Moses, Moses, we've got to get this out of you before you're going to be of any use to God. And so Moses went off for 40 years in the wilderness, basically to get Egypt out of him, basically to get the wisdom of the world out of him, basically to get the training that he thought was so paramount to becoming a success in life, all had to go and God had to take him out of that to say, let's start again. And the word of God for him, the spoken word of God was all that he had. And here this man, this wonderful leader, probably one of the greatest human beings who's ever been alive, lived according to the beauty and the law of God, the spoken word of God. Well, today we have the written word of God. We have Bibles. What a wonderful thing that God has put this amazing book together, this God-breathed book for us to get real wisdom from. And when we start living according to what the Bible says and not according to what prevailing wisdom have to say, has to say, then it's a completely different ballgame. This is where real Christian living comes from, the very Word of God. Now, the challenge for us is we all know that. But the real challenge for us is, are we willing to read the Word of God in the first place? Then are we willing to study the Word of God in the second? And the third one is really the big one. Are we willing to apply the Word of God into our lives? Not looking for another source of wisdom, not looking for some TV celebrity or some psychologist. And I'm sure I don't want to take away completely from what people like that may be saying. If they are speaking the Word of God, then listen to them. If they're not, then it might just be good advice, some of it at best. But the Word of God, by faith, to be applied into our lives, that's where real wisdom comes from. And with wisdom comes this beautiful thing of understanding the difference between right and wrong, the difference between what displeases God and what pleases God is found in the wisdom of God, especially on the subject of what pleases Him and displeases Him. And I guess at the end of the day, that's what purity is all about. So purity, we find, begins with God, new hearts, continues in God's book, the Bible, as he gives us all the wisdom to know what purity should look like in your life. Let's read it, study it, love it, and above all, let's live it. You guys have a fantastic day, and we will see you again tomorrow. Bye now.